Um, so listen, uh, I want to start with congratulations on the sequel. Uh, you did an amazing job with it. Nice, uh, man. Um, did you actually feel, because the first film was so successful and Netflix paid for two sequels and they paid a lot of money, did you feel a little pressure or more pressure making the sequel? Like, this really has to be a good movie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but no more pressure than you always feel when you do something new. <laughs> like, this has to be a good movie, I think. Uh, I hope that's always there. I mean, I, I wrote the thing before we made the Netflix deal, so I didn't know who we were making it with when I when I wrote it, so that didn't come into play. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it was, to me, the, the fact that the, the mode of doing another one, as opposed to trying to build off of or top the first one, it was about looking back to how Agatha Christie did her novels, where each one was completely different. It had its own reason for being. And I think that let me just approach this one as its own movie with its own goals and its own, you know, everything. So um, I think maybe that helped take some of the pressure off. But yeah, I, I did definitely feel it a little bit. <laughs> with all the films you've made, which shot or sequence, this is a, this is a curveball, yeah. which shot or sequence ended up being like the most challenging to pull off, whether it be camera moves, whether it be the dialogue and the camera move, you know, it was just a real pain in the A. Real pain in the butt. I mean, we've had like difficult shots before, but in terms of in terms of scenes, I mean, I feel like maybe this isn't like the most difficult, but in the first Knives Out, there's like a, se a sequence that starts the movie in, in the library where Blanc's questioning all of the suspects. And it's a very complicated scene where there's lots of intercutting of the different questioning and you're setting up every character, trying to get the, a lot of information clear. And I think that sequence, whatever it was, eight, 10 minutes, we recut over and over for the length of the editing process. <laughs> Up until the very end, it was the last thing we were working on, still trying to trim it down. So there's anytime you have a complicated sequence like that, that's, a, that's something you always dig into. I'm curious, with when you came up with the idea for Glass Onion, how much did you debate, this is the idea I want to go with? And because obviously you're making another one after this, but yeah. you know, how did you know this was the one I wanted for the next movie? And did you almost do something else? I, you know, I, there were a couple of things I was kind of entertaining. One of them was kind of like a bigger, more meta, even more meta wacky idea that, um, which I won't pitch because in case I didn't want to use it down the line, I don't want to spoil it. But um, no, I don't know. I think it, it, you have to kind of, um, you, you, that was one thing that could be a potential trap of these, especially thinking like, oh my God, how do I top the last one? I think you could probably get in a cycle of thinking of rejecting each idea is not like good enough um, because no idea is good enough until you start working on it, I think. So I kind of just picked a horse early on and was like, okay, it'll be this. And you start going down the path and sculpting it and then it turns into the thing and it becomes what it is. The reaction to this film has been very strong. And I'm curious as a filmmaker, does that, I know you, I think you've said that you want to go into making another Knives Out as your next film. Does it energize you when you have this kind of reaction? And part two to this is, do you already have the idea for the next one? It, it energizes. It also is like your previous question. It's, it's scary also <laughs> because once you, you know, when you're making something, it's like it's like a ball of mud that you're forming. You got your hands in it. It's personal. It's, it's your thing. And then the instant you put it out there... Um, kind of especially if people like it, it suddenly becomes this, and we sit here and do these interviews about it and talk about it, um, it suddenly becomes this thing outside of yourself that's this kind of gilded thing and you kind of forget how you made it, sort of. So it makes it a little scarier, actually, but in a good way, I mean, um, to do the next one. I don't have the idea for the next one. I'm starting right now to kind of think, and the big thing for me is just how can it be totally different, not just from the first one, but also from Glass Onion. On that note, I have to stop, but I'm sure that we will talk again at some point. Yes, please.